This is our Mahindra 2020 2638. We have, as you just saw, just under 500 hours. I'm going to be doing the 500 hour service, which is pretty much the same as the 50 hour with a couple different things I got to do that I didn't do at the 50 hour. We're going to be doing all the fluids, which include the hydrostatic fluids, motor oil. We've got new air filters we're going to be putting in inside, outside. Your HST spin-on filter, fuel filter, and oil filter. Now I pulled out my manuals. I have the Mahindra Operator's Manual. And I've already got that opened up to my maintenance schedule. And I've also, when I purchased the tractor, picked up the Mahindra Service Manual. The service manual would be used by the mechanics in the shop. And this has a lot more technical information, obviously, for rebuilding the tractor, especially later on in the, in the manual. They have a maintenance schedule chart here. I've already done everything except the fuel filter at the 50 mile check. I did the oil, engine oil, HST oil, and basically cleaned all the air filters out, greased everything and went through it. Today I'll be doing the same thing, a little more extensive. Let's get started with the oil change. Those pop off pretty easy. See, there's a clip right here and a little holder right there. Basically, just pick up on it and pulls out of that clip in the back. The other side pops off the same way. Pull up on it, go forward. So in a matter of a minute or two, you get the cover popped up, side panels off. Air filter right here, real accessible. The battery, radiator. Over here you've got dipstick, engine oil, which is accessible with the side cover on. This is where you would fill it. Pop this right out when we're ready. Um, there's a fuel filter here. This is a secondary type filter. So we're not actually going to be doing that one today. I'm going to be doing the one over on this side. This is the replaceable fuel filter right in here. So I got that one. There's the engine oil filter. We'll go ahead and start draining the HST hydraulic fluid. There's the drain plug right there. Now this holds about eight and a half gallons. So obviously you're gonna need, once you take that plug out, you're gonna need something big enough to catch everything. This is a tub. I believe I got it at uh, one of the big box, like a Home Depot. I think it's made for mixing concrete and whatever mortar but uh, I think it's a good size I'm not sure the exact size but if I remember correctly this was able to catch just about all nine gallons I've also got my little pump handy and I'm ready to transfer over to a bigger bucket once it it gets full but I think I'm good I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this out same size Two filters, the outside and the inside. 
And I've already cleaned this one out several times, the outside one several times, and in the inside. The inside stays fairly clean. Um, but today I got two brand new ones, so I'm not even going to bother with these. I'm going to give that a clean out and put a new one in it. I'm going to tackle the fuel filter, which sits right there while I get the oil filter out. Give me a little more room down there. I don't know if I need it. I've never replaced this one yet. All right. During the editing of this video, I realized I didn't hit the record button when I was doing the fuel filter. So I just wanted to add in a little bit. I'm obviously not going to be doing it. I just did it. So I just wanted to kind of go over the steps I uh, used to replace that fuel filter in the canister right up here. And basically, I had a pair of pliers. I just pinched off this fuel line here. And then I pulled this drain plug right here. And I caught the fuel that was in this canister into a drip pan down below. Once that was drained out, I grabbed a wrench and loosened that nut right up at the top here. Down right there. And once you loosen that one, this canister will drop right down. Of course, my oil filter wasn't there at the time, so that made it a little easier, gave me a little more room. Okay, here's the fuel filter canister, and I'm just replacing the drain bolt on the bottom before I put it back on. Just wanted to make note, there's a little copper washer on here, so if you are doing this, make sure that you didn't lose that. It's a sealer, kind of washer gasket kind of thing. Want to make sure that that is in place when you tighten it up. I've already cleaned this out. I, I sprayed it out and there was some particles in there. New filter here. And we also have a new O-ring that sits on the top right here. Uh, I didn't get the old one out yet. I will go ahead and do that now. It sits right up inside here. It's in there good. There you go. And put this new one in there. Got a little bit of oil here. I captured from the motor. I'm just going to Kind of coat the seal a little bit with it. Okay. Now to get the new one up inside here. A little bit of a challenge. You want to make sure that's seated up in there real good and, and tight, not crossed. I'm just going to take my, my little pick and use the back side, not the pointy side. I'm just kind of push it up inside there a little bit. Make sure it's seated well before I go ahead and put it back on. That's it. That wasn't too bad. Yep, make sure it seats firmly at the bottom. Now get this back on here. All right, I've got that started. I gotta find my I believe it was the 13. Finish tightening that up. Don't want to over tighten it. Okay. Fuel filter is in. We have our new oil filter here. And 
again just take a little bit of oil that I've drained from my engine I'm just kind of put a little bit of a coating on here doesn't need much being careful not to cross thread it Screw it on until it seats. Once it seats, another quarter to half a turn. All right, I decided I'm going to, there's another transmission filter right here. It's a, called a suction filter. And with all the metal shavings, I decided it'd be a good idea to just go ahead and pop this out. I didn't buy a new one. They are cleanable. They, they say they can be clean. It's just the metal. And um, there we go. There we go. Just pull that off of there. And you can see this. And this is 1 16th. Loosen these up. Should pop right out of here. I don't know if I'll have enough room. Oh boy. Boy. I don't know. I might have to take that off of here. There we go. Oh, oh no. Gotta get this linkage out of the way. I get it all the way out. Yeah. Oh. But they didn't make it real easy to take out. Like cotter pin, washer. All right. Okay, I got that shift. Is that a shift or is that a brake? I'm not sure. Brake. Let's see if we can get that out now. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oil filler cap. Okay, it specifies 1.3 gallons of oil, but it doesn't specify if that's with an oil filter or not. And I know last time I did an oil change, it was closer to two gallons with the filter. So I'm going to stop right there. I got about a gallon and a half in there. And that is reading up at the top. So it's close enough. I'm gonna wait now. We'll fire it up and then we'll top it off. Check it again once we get it running. Okay. The last filter I'm going to pull is this HST filter, the hydrostatic filter. Might as well go ahead and put the new filter on. And I'm going to put the drain plug back in and reinstall the drain plug for the hydrostatic transmission.
So the only filter left is the uh, suction strain filter. It's a metal filter. It goes right in over here. And this is the suction strainer I was pointing to a minute ago under the uh, <clears throat> under the tractor where it goes for the transmission. All right, I'm going to wind this down. And as you can see, I still got the hood open on here. I still got to finish up a couple little things, but my battery is about to die on the phone. So I'm going to go ahead and charge this up and we'll be back tomorrow morning like that. And just like that, something like that, we're back next day. I ended up getting the right filter I needed. We're going to go ahead and get that installed right now. And we're going to finish this project up so we can get this thing back to work. Okay, as you can see right here, I got the brand new suction filter, mesh wire suction filter for the HST transmission. I'm going to get this installed. And after that, we'll add the uh, HST oil to it. And that's about eight and a half, nine gallons. Got a few more minor things I want to do. I want to clean out the air filters for the cab. And we'll probably just check some of the belts for the AC and the radiator. A couple of the lines and whatnot, but for the most part, everything looks ready to go. So it'd be nice to get this out of the way. And we can move on and put it back to work. Get some more projects done. Okay, here we are back underneath the Mahindra 2638. And I wish I could get a better angle for you. Unfortunately, let's see if I can get a little better of a close up. But basically, uh, I don't really know exactly if I'm getting that good right there, but here's the filter I'm trying to install. And this is the where it's, the hole it's got to go in, it, it is at an angle, and this bar, which I believe might have something to do with the subframe for the backhoe, is just enough in the way that this will not go in straight, this filter. So, um, it's not missing by much. I certainly don't want to damage it, but I believe if I can just slide it back a little bit and down I can get this in there there it goes that wasn't bad at all all right and before I put that in I'm just gonna coat that o-ring with a little bit of oil nice well that didn't go too badly at all I'm glad I got that replaced Push that in. Go ahead and finish mounting this up, and then we'll start getting the oil put to it. There's one last thing I just remembered I need to take care of while I'm underneath here, and that is to install the cover over my mid-PTO. Mid-PTO points to the front of the tractor for implements that work off the front of the tractor. I use it for my snowblower. The fill plug's in a little bit of an awkward position, location I should say, down here underneath. See, I don't have the right... I have the best funnel for it. It works, but definitely would like to come up with something a little better. All right, well, I had five gallons to pour in that transmission, and there was no way I was going to be able to do that into a funnel. I got this uh, pump, a little DC-operated pump from uh, Harbor Freight. Fits right in the tub here, going down into a funnel. And... You can see right there, it goes into the crankcase. I already got three gallons in there, uh, single gallon jugs. So this will be eight. I have one more. Should take about eight and a half, maybe nine. I had some of the hoses apart, so, and I did the filters. So we got a few more minutes to go on this, and I'll show you where I check the level. 
on the back here there's a sight glass and we'll check in in a few minutes all right we're getting down to the end of it i took the cover off just to make sure i was fully uh into the oil all the way to the bottom working pretty well hasn't taken too long actually i'm i'm guessing i don't know i haven't timed it but probably at least like five minutes but between five and ten minutes but i'll tell you what it's a lot easier than trying to pour there's so much stuff in the way here just to get to the final at uh i don't have the right funnel for the job probably but better funnel would probably do the trick this works great the only change i might make is just extend this hose so i can get rid of the funnel completely for future use all right almost done all right got it topped off got that five gallons i actually got a total of eight in there now got the cap back on that worked real well with the pump made it made it pretty uh, easy to do obviously the sight glass for this is just over on the other side of the tractor here a little down from where the fill plug is kind of hard to get to and I, i'm going to do my best to point it out here but you really got to get in here of course i've got the I've got the back of one here so it makes it a little even more complicated but there it is right there and i'll just try to shine a light on it see if i can there it is right there and it's hard to tell from the camera probably, but it's got a reddish tint to it, which tells me it's full. Now, it's supposed to be about half to three quarters. You should be able to see the level in there, but I do have it a little full, and I'm assuming because, again, I haven't started it yet, but basically that's where I want to start off with the base. I know I have more to go but we'll get it fired up and that'll go down and then we'll be able to see the level in there the true level and we'll top it off from there so we got that the next thing i got to top off is the diesel fuel and i'll go grab my can and we'll get that topped off and i think we're ready to try firing it up check for leaks and Top all the oils off. Filters are done. Oh, I still got to do my air filters for the cabin, my cabin filters. I did those not too long ago, but I'll do them again. All right, well that concludes my 500 hour service on the Mahindra 2638. Um, except for a couple little things, I thought it went pretty well. It wasn't as difficult as I thought. I learned a lot about the tractor. I didn't take time to study or learn about. I was so anxious to just get going and get working on it. Didn't really take too much time to look it over. This uh, service gave me an opportunity to kind of learn a little bit more about the tractor and found a few more grease fittings that I hadn't known about. Grab the camera here and I'll walk you around and kind of show you a little bit more about uh, what I covered here. So as I just said, I did the engine oil and filter, transmission oil filter, and the suction filter, mesh filter. I also checked the coolant level, that was good. Also checked the front transaxle fluid added a little bit into here. I will probably do a change at some point in the near future. I did adjust, can't, I got the covers on now, but I did adjust the alternator belt. It was a little on the loose side. Check the coolant belt, uh, fan belt, that was fine. Um, I also replaced the fuel filter, put a new fuel filter. Um, I did mention the oil filter. Greased all the fittings I could find. I found 12 fittings on the loader alone. I found five grease fittings on the tractor. Two were mentioned in the manual. One that wasn't. Two that were mentioned in the manual that are not on the tractor. So uh, 
there's two for the pedal forward and reverse pedal linkage. There's another one, can't quite make it out, but it's up here to the front. And I'll do a better video explaining that in the near future here. I'm going to go through all these fittings one more time and show where they are. But for right now, I just wanted to go over and make sure you knew what I had covered. I went over the back as far as filling and checking the level. I've done that a couple times now. I did end up having to do a new, I had a leak on one of my crimps. It wasn't actually leaking at the fitting, it was actually leaking in the crimp. And they tried to crimp it and ended up making it worse. It was just too fragile and thin. So I ended up buying a new, or they ended up cutting the hose and putting a new fitting on. That was something that wasn't really losing a lot of oil or fluid. It was more just making a mess. It was a very, very slow leak, but over hours of operation, it just dripped down the whole side of the tractor and collected dirt and didn't like it. So I took care of that. Also, I kind of, if you know these hoses on the 2638, they go to the backhoe. Uh, in the past, I had them actually zip tied to um, a tube back up in here. And I noticed that it was wearing, you can see it a little bit right here. So I ended up zip tying them all together. And in my mind, I don't like having it zip tied to anything that could, it'll eventually rub and vibrate. So what I tried to do is support them back up in here. I connected it up to the seat with a piece of wire. You can see it right here. And that kind of holds them all in place. So as the tractor's moving, it's, these hoses are moving, but it's, they're not touching anything. There, there is one line here that's kind of touching one of the three point, but it's got an extra coating uh, cover on it, protective cover, and same with over here, very minor. So it's a lot better situation than it was. And the added benefit is I used a piece of oh, coat hang, oh, I call it welding wire, actually, to make the little bracket to hold it up. Let me get over the other side. I'll show you what I mean. So here's my, my little setup here to just uh, kind of hold my hoses, hydraulic hoses for the backhoe up away from the machine allows them to move. They're not touching anything. I really like that. They're zip tied together further down inside and they're just floating pretty much. So no matter how much I'm bouncing around, these hoses won't rub on anything and wear out eventually. That's just a concern, obviously, to some extent, not major, but, um, and as I mentioned, I put this wire on here to just, I wrapped it around the seat post here, which actually accomplished one other thing. I used to have a bungee cord that kind of held this seat up when I wasn't using it because it would constantly fill with water and I, you know, just the sun's beating on it. So I like to fold it up. It was made to fold up. I like to fold it up. So I had a bungee cord holding this on previously. And what I've done is because of this wire now, kind of snaked it around this hinge here and it kind of gives it just enough friction that when I need it, I just pull it down, push it up and it seems to be pretty tight right there. So that's good. Anyway, I did do 19 grease fittings on the backhoe. And again, I'll go over that in another video. I found 19. I'm not sure. The manual never specifies exactly how many you're going to find or how many you're going to need to do. They just say do the grease fittings. It's pretty much what I found. And again, I have both the service manual and the owner's manual. So it's kind of weird that they won't tell you exactly where to find them, but that's what it is. So and I got a lot more work to do. So again, that's it for the Mahindra 2638 500 hour. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Appreciate you watching. And let me know about your Mahindra. Be curious to know how you like yours. Thanks all. See you in the next one.